I'm just going to make this short and sweet, so let's get into it, because i got a lot of fucking things i got to get off my chest. This is the fuel. <sighs> Forgive me if I skip over the introductions this week, because I am just simply not in a fucking mood to go through the usual shit that I do is I, I am just not in the fucking mood I am just so pissed off about a lot of things my fucking bitch shoot channel doesn't seem to want to upload videos at the moment for some goddamn reason um what happened in the fucking roval race there was a lot of things that just pissed me off and then of course there's the fucker that I'm going to be picking a bone with in uh, my dumbass of the week this week. Mr. David Land. Now, why I'm picking a bone with him is because um, there was an incident that happened during this race. So let's just go ahead and jump right to the end of the race. Fuck it. There was an incident that took place during the race where Alex Bowman spun Bubba Wallace um, because Bubba was flipping him the finger for some weird ass reason. And then after the race, while Bowman was receiving medical attention, Bubba decided to come over, uh, say some words to him, and basically splashed some water or Gatorade in his face while he was sitting on the ground receiving medical attention from an NASCAR medical official that was right there as well. This, of course, got the ire of a lot of people. And there, of course, there were some people that were saying that, you know, well, it wouldn't, people wouldn't be getting so up in arms about this if, you know, it w if it was somebody else that wasn't, you know, African American or some stupid shit like that thing about that is I couldn't give two flying fucks what the guy's skin color is I mean it could be baby shit green for all I care race is not a factor here I would be saying the exact same thing if the roles were reversed or if it was two completely different people I understand why Bubba was upset about it because I don't I don't agree with what Bowman did either I mean if he was getting upset because you know Bubba was roughing him up then that'd be one thing but for you know a gesture taking a guy out because of that just seems a little excessive so I don't condone what Alex Bowman did by any stretch of the imagination you know, and there were some people that were like, well, some of y'all were, you know, eating up what happened when uh, Clint Boyer was punching Ryan Newman while he was still strapping the car. Well, for the record, I, for one, didn't condone that either. Because I thought that was chicken shit of Clint Boyer to do. You know, if you want to be that mad at somebody, wait for them to get out of the damn car and then settle it up then. And you could say the same applies here. Because Bowman was on the ground receiving medical attention and Bubba just comes up and splashes him in the face and then just walks off. And I thought that was chicken shit. And then of course David Land being his usual fucking sarcastic ass self on Twitter, you know, starts posting all this different shit, you know, about how, oh, different liquids being splashed in someone's face. And it's just like, dude. One thing that some people don't seem to be realizing, and I stand by what I said here, is the fact that if somebody drinks out of a water bottle and then splashes it on multiple people, which was what happened in this case, do you know that can be considered a biohazard? And of course, I got a lot of flack for this on Twitter, which I don't really give a fuck. I mean, you can disagree with me all you want, but... This is not me saying this. This is a proven fact. Be 
it can be considered a biohazard because if someone has a contagious disease and drinks from a bottle, contaminates the water, and then splashes it onto people, that could cause those people to get infected. You know, and I, and I said it can be considered a biohazard. Well, what pissed me off about David Land is he basically replied to me. So he was basically like, brah, you were just in my mentions talking nonsense about Bubba using a biological weapon. Get out of here with that. David, I'm just going to say this as wholeheartedly as I possibly can. Fuck you. You are nothing but a sarcastic, worthless piece of fuck who seems to love twisting people's words around. Because let me tell you something, you dumb fucking Nimrod. Where did I say? Huh? Where in the fuck did I say on my Twitter, on my tweets, that Bubba was using a biological weapon? I never fucking said that, you idiot. Maybe that's why you need them fucking glasses, because you can't see straight. Because I can go to my fucking Twitter right now. Alright, and you can look at my fucking tweets. And I basically told him I never considered, I never said he was using a biological weapon, which is what he was insinuating. I said it can be considered a biohazard. Because I tweeted, uh, because here's here was one of my responses from earlier. Here's the thing. If Bubba drank from that bottle and then threw it on everyone, that can be considered a biohazard. Especially if he had something contagious. And since it splashed on multiple people, including a NASCAR medical official, mind you, he can get in trouble for that. And oh, by the way, NASCAR is going to be looking into this. But David basically insinuates that I said he was using a biological weapon, which I never said. So believe it or not, David, that can be considered libel because you're twisting my fucking words into something that I never said in the first place. And I don't appreciate that fucking shit. You know, and I had respect for you and I agreed with you on a lot of things, but Honestly, after you insinuated that bullshit, fuck you. I'm honestly starting to see why people don't like your ass. And you can call me salty all you fucking want. I really don't give a flying monkey fuck right now. I can't stand people that are this fucking ignorant. And that are this much of a sarcastic bastard. I mean, I'm honestly surprised he hasn't gotten kicked in the fucking teeth yet for his sarcastic ass attitude. And don't you ever fucking insinuate that I said something when I never fucking said it. It's bullshit and you know it. Try to say that he was using a biological weapon. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. So I never said any such thing. So that can be considered libel, David. Believe it or not. And you can even look on my fucking Twitter. I never said that he was using a biological weapon. I never said that, you know, he that was going through his head. He was just pissed about what happened, you know, on the track. You know, using something that could have been considered a biohazard probably wasn't even running through his brain. Because I'm pretty sure that wasn't his intention. His intention was just to get Bowman's intention to let him know that he didn't appreciate what the fuck happened. I'm just saying that other people could consider it a biohazard. Because it has been proven in the past. I mean, what the fuck else do you want me to say, hmm? But no, I'm the fucking bad guy, you know, for trying to... You know, point this out and considering and and considering that NASCAR is looking into this 
that's probably one of the things that they're going to be looking at it's not going to be the main thing but it's going to be one of the things because here's the other thing splashing a liquid onto someone you know intentionally and with hostile intentions that can be considered battery and there was a medical official that was right there as well that got splashed by it and I don't think NASCAR is going to take too kindly to that and the other thing is this is not something new from Bubba Wallace I mean I can remember the K&N race at Bowman Gray Stadium where he nearly got into it with a cop we've seen this kind of behavior for, before from him so honestly I think both Alex Bowman and Bubba Wallace are in the wrong here and I don't hate Bubba Wallace. I mean, I said in my indie, in my um, Brickyard 400 review, that the only reason why I gave that race a half a point was because Bubba Wallace finished third, and I meant that wholeheartedly. Like I said, I don't, I'm no, there's no frills and no, there's no bullshit with me. I tell it like it is, and I can get why Bubba Wallace was upset at Alex Bowman, but there is a time, and a place for it. Bowman was on the ground receiving medical attention for dehydration. I guess he was also suffering a little bit from the flu during the week as well. And it was pretty damn hot at the race today. I mean, it was up in the, in the mid-90s. It was unseasonably hot. Record high temperatures for the Charlotte area. And he was severely dehydrated when he got out of the car. So they had to have medical personnel look at him and treat him for dehydration. So I can understand why Bubba is upset, but there's a time and a place for it, and that was not the time or the place. And of course for you know him to basically say that Bowman was pulling you know the medical card so he didn't, couldn't bust him in the mouth, Bubba, shut up. I mean, you are not making yourself look any better, dude. You know, and there are people that are pulling the racism card, and I don't condone that whatso fucking ever. Okay, I am not criticizing Bubba Wallace because he has a different fucking skin color than me. I don't condone racism whatsoever. I don't agree with what he did. Period. Again, I understand why he's upset. But, at the same time, there's a time and a place for it. You know, and maybe the biohazard thing maybe it is a little bit of a reach because I don't think Bubba had anything contagious from the looks of it but do you really want to take that risk I mean there is precedent for it but yeah I'm I'm done with David Land I mean I had respect for him but I'm done supporting him if he's going to be that much of an ignorance of an ignorant ass, then he's not. He's honestly not worth my time. So this will be the last time I speak of him, and I. And this is the last time that I will speak with him in a positive light. So fuck David Land. He can eat a bag of dicks, as far as I'm concerned. Boy, that escalated quickly. I apologize for going on such a tangent, but that just really, really pissed me off. And it's put me in such a mood that, you know, I'm not going to do news of the week this week because there is some pretty big news that came out this week, but I'm going to push it back to next week. I'm going to push it back to the Dover review, so there'll probably be quite a few news stories that to go over for the Dover race. And I was going to do the Xfinity review for this race, but to be honest, nothing of fucking uh, interest really happened. You know, other than some bullshit that happened near the end in the front stretch chicane between a couple championship contenders. But other than that, there was nothing really of salient value to go over. So... Let's just get this fucking review done and over with. I, I am so not in the mood right now. But here we go. 2019 Bank of America Roval 400 at Charlotte. The Charlotte Road Course. 
Yeah, any other thing that fucking sucks is I was really looking forward to this race. But there was a lot of things that happened in this race. And after the fact, that just has put me in such a mood that I just do not fucking care. <sighs> William Byron starts from the pole. Uh, Alex Bowman uh, spins himself out on the back, sh back chicane, which caused Truex to miss the chicane. Which forced Truex to have to stop on the front stretch, which I thought was pretty fucking stupid. Yeah, NASCAR decided to make a rule that if you miss the chicane, any, either of the chicanes for any reason, even if it's not your fault, you can be penalized for it. Because they wanted to remove the black and they wanted to make it black and white and remove um, the judgment call of it. Penalizing someone for something that's out of their control is pretty fucking arbitrary and stupid. That's not the only stupid ass officiating we had. Um, so Byron leads lap one. Um, Bubba Wallace has to serve a drive through for missing the chicane and not stopping. Now if they completely miss the chicane, you know, on their own merits, that's one thing. Because that's considered uh, cutting the racetrack. But if they get forced off and they get penalized for it, then that's stupid shit. Uh, Truex actually missed the back chicane twice. The first one was not of his own doing. The second one was his own doing. Uh, Daniel Hemrick missed it as well. Uh, Harvick gets by Logano for third. Uh, Larson gets by Logano at the front stretch chicane for fourth. And then we had our first of nine caution flags. Yes, you heard me correctly. Nine fucking caution flags in this race. NASCAR was just way too trigger happy on the yellows. And they were throwing yellows for things that shouldn't have been, they shouldn't have thrown yellows for, yet there were instances of incidents on track where they were throwing cautions for, which makes no fucking sense. Um, and this was one of them. Ryan Priest spins in the back stretch chicane. He gets it going again, but they decided to throw the yellow. And my question was why? Uh, about half the field stays out, half comes in for service. Byron leads on the restart, and then we immediately get our second caution on lap 23. Kurt Busch gets into the back of Chris Buescher, which pushes him into Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, and Eric Jones. Alex Bowman is also involved in his second incident of the day. And this also put a hole in Eric Jones's radiator, which puts him out of the race, and his playoffs are done. And uh, Larson also took over the lead as he was ahead of Byron when the caution came out. And he wins stage one under caution. Um, those who didn't come in on the first caution pit on this one. Um, and because of where they finished in the stage and the stage points that they received. Uh, Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, and Danny Hamlin all locked themselves into the round of 12 um, on points. So that's six out of 12 spots that have been locked. Uh, Larson gets penalized for pitting outside the box because um, apparently there was a crew guy that was trying to either put tape on the front or take tape off. And apparently you can't do that because that's considered pitting outside the box. And uh, Larson got a one lap penalty for that. whatever. Joey Logano leads the start of stage two. Uh, Harvick was hounding Logano for the race lead, but uh, the guy that certainly had the fastest uh, car of the day was Chase Elliott, who was right behind him. Uh, Elliott gets by Harvick for second and easily passes Logano for, lead, for the lead in the infield section. Uh, so we had our first pure lead change on lap 32. Harvick gets by Logano for second. Um, Keselowski um, thought he flat, sp flat spotted his front tires on the front stretch when he locked them up in the chicane. Uh, stacked up the field quite a bit. Uh, and he comes to pit road to get the tires replaced. It was a little bit earlier than I think he was planning to come in. But uh, it still worked out for him in the end anyways. Uh, Corey Lovejoy spins and turns seven as Logano pits from third. Uh, Logano slides wide at the exit of the pit road and into some tire barriers that are right there. 
uh, which damaged his left front. So cold tires, uh, I think, played a part in that. Uh, the good thing for him is he was already locked into the next round anyway. Uh, third caution on lap 42, Alex Bowman cleans Bubba Wallace out at the exit of the back chicane after Bubba apparently flipped him off multiple times. Of course, that was when, you know, Bubba Wallace was, you know, giving him the finger for some weird reason. And Bubba and uh, Bowman decided to uh, clean his clock by spinning him coming out of the chicane, which, again, I don't really condone because it's like, you know, Bubba, yeah, he was flipping him finger, which was, I mean, come on. That's just childish shit. But, you know, Alex Bowman spinning him out, I don't agree with that either. A lot of cars come in for service. Uh, Clint Boyer stays out and leads on the restart. Uh, Elliot starts bull rushing back towards the front on fresh tires. Uh, Boyer runs wide in turn three and Keselowski uh, pounces on him and takes the lead in the infield section for a second pure lead change on lap 57. Uh, Elliott gets up to second past Boyer with four to go in stage two. Uh, Kez nearly loses it in the infield trying to hold the nine at bay and that allows uh, Elliott to reclaim the lead very easily for a third pure lead change on lap 59. Uh, uh, Hamlin spins at the back chicane but gets it get back going again. And Chase Elliott wins stage number two. This one was actually a lot cleaner and a lot more interesting than stage one. Bubba Wallace might disagree, but you know how that is. Uh, Elliott with his stage win and the 10 stage points that comes with it, clinches a spot in the round of 12 on points. So with one stage to go before four drivers are eliminated, uh, seven drivers have locked their way in on points, which means that there are five spots and uh, nine drivers trying to get those five spots. So several drivers come in for service and Elliott leads the start of stage number three, which is 59 laps. The first two stages were 25 laps a piece. Uh, we had four wide going into heartburn turn, which is the first turn. They somehow make it though, despite a little bit of contact. Uh, Elliott out to a three second lead with 50 laps to go. Uh, Ryan Blaney, um, had something dragging underneath and you can see a steady stream of sparks uh, turned out it was a broken track bar strut uh, which they were able to get repaired but uh, our fourth caution came out on lap 62 when Daniel Hemrick spins in turn 13 uh, Elliot leads on the restart and we had our fifth caution immediately afterwards on lap 65 uh, when the leader himself Chase Elliott locks it up going into heartburn turn and hits the tire barrier and he even said on the radio he couldn't believe that he just did that. A little bit of insight might uh, work as to why that is. Uh, on the restarts, when they're coming to the green flag, uh, they use what is normally the quad oval uh, for the restarts. Uh, and then on the preceding laps under green, they use the chicane. Because of that, the re and on the restarts, they're going into turn one a little bit faster than they do when they use the chicane. I think it's about a 20 mile an hour difference. So it can be very easily on restarts to lock it up going into turn one because you're going a little bit faster than you normally do uh, on the green flag run. Uh, but he was able to get to pit road, get repairs and uh, get ready because he's about to charge back through the field. <laughs> uh, Harvick leads on the restart. Truex gets up to second by Keselowski trying to sweep the entire round. Uh, Kyle Busch with a left front tire down after contact with Kyle Larson in turn one. He was pretty much a non-existent factor this entire race. And um, the flat tire happened at a very uh, bad spot. Um, and uh, what well, actually went down in the infield section, he had to drive it all the way back around on a flat left front. Which pretty much, uh, I think he said, drug the sway bar arm off. So uh, that was pretty much it for him, although he was already locked in anyways. Um, but yeah, he was pretty much a non-factor this entire race. Uh, Hamlin comes in for his final stop of the day. Uh, William Byron gets up to third by Keselowski. Uh, green flag pit stops beginning in mass on lap 75. Uh, Harvick pits from the lead on lap 77. Uh, Elliott stays out and inherits the race lead for now, 
but pits on lap number 80. Uh, Harvick cycles back with the lead, and he, he had a pretty big lead. Uh, Boyer goes by Amarola for 7th. Uh, the 36 of Matt Tiff spins in the infield section, but there's no caution. Uh, Amarola and Chase Elliott get by Keselowski for a position. Uh, Chase Elliott up to 5th after restarting 37th, which is pretty damn impressive. Uh, the only problem was he was 15 seconds behind Kevin Harvick, and Harvick actually had a 7 second lead over Truex. That would all change on the 6th caution of the day on lap 98. Or 89, excuse me. Um, when Ricky Stenhouse Jr. spins in the backstretch chicane. Uh-oh. A lot of front runners stay out while a lot of the back half comes in. So Harvick leads on the restart. Uh, Boyer with a great restart and gets up to the third position. Uh, Blaney locks it up hard in the backstretch chicane, uh, so there was concern that he may have flat spotted tires. Uh, the seventh caution came out on lap 92 when Hamlin loses it in the infield section. And this was pretty big because Ryan Priest and Ryan Newman were caught up in this as well uh, with the sixth receiving damage. Uh, so he had to basically come to pit road and get that repaired. So Harvick leads on the restart. Uh, Elliott gets up to fourth on the restart. Had a big stack up at the front stretch chicane, and then our eighth caution comes out on lap 95 uh, when Daniel Suarez spins out in the infield section and stalls the car. Um, local yellows will really would have worked for this race because way too many caution flags. Our Almarola comes in for fresh tires. Harvick leads on the restart. Elliott gets up to third on the restart, and then we hit our ninth and final caution on lap 99 uh, when Kurt Busch and Chris Busher get together and spin in turn number nine. Uh, there was a red flag issued for rear end grease on the track from the 52 car, which lasted for about 8 minutes. And uh, there was actually some rain in the area to the north of the track, but it didn't look like it was going to get there. Um, Harvick leads on the restart with 6 laps to go, but Elliott gets up to second by Truex. Uh, starts challenging Harvick for the lead, and he takes the lead uh, at the front stretch chicane, which was on the restart, so no pure lead change. But uh, Elliot basically got the lead, and that was all she wrote. Comeback complete. Uh, Bowman actually moves up to second by Harvick. So after uh, basically getting spun out twice and being involved in a third incident with Bubba Wallace, he manages to get up to second, which is pretty crazy. But uh, he was still a little bit in the danger zone because Newman was actually still ahead of him uh, in the points. Uh, Newman... Although, although Newman was running Almer Rolla hard to keep the 10 behind him because the 10 was on fresh tires. And uh, Newman was trying to keep him behind him because uh, Newman was only one point ahead of Bowman at this point. Uh, Elliott begins pulling away. But the saving grace for Alex Bowman comes when Ryan Newman misses the backstretch chicane. And it's pretty clear that he completely missed it because all four tires uh, were underneath the red and yellow uh, strip. So that is considered cutting the track. And uh, he was not forced off by anybody. That was all on his own doing. Um, much like all the other, pretty much all the other guys earlier. Save for uh, Truex at the beginning. And uh, did not pass through. And did not stop in the restart zone. So because of that, he had 30 seconds added to his time. Which, that pretty much put him out of contention. Uh, Suarez gets in a crash with Hamrick off of turn 14 actually and actually spins out again in the front stretch chicane because of all the damage he had. No caution for that though. And Chase Elliott wins the Bank of America Robo 400 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway um, for his third win of the year, his sixth career win, and his third on a road course. So half of his victories have come on road courses. So, needless to say, Chase Elliott has become quite the uh, road course specialist, as it seems. He has two wins at Watkins Glen and now one here at the Charlotte Road Course. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, finishing order real quick. Alright, so top 10 finishers for the Bank of America Roval 400. Of course, Chase Elliott getting the win, Alex Bowman in second, so it's a Hendrick Motorsports 1-2. Uh, 
Uh, Kevin Harvick and Clint Boyer finished third and fourth. So SHR up there as well. Brad Keselowski in fifth. William Byron in sixth. Martin Truex Jr. in the seventh position. The highest finishing Toyota. Uh, Ryan, Bl Ryan Blaney in eighth. Jimmy Johnson in the ninth position. And Joey Logano uh, rounds out the top ten. Shout out to Matt Benedetto uh, who finished 11th. And Michael McDowell who finished 12th after passing a kidney stone earlier in the week. That's pretty freaking crazy. So, point standings. Let me see if I can find them here. Alright, it doesn't seem to tell me, you know, all the... Why did it do that? It doesn't seem to tell me all the points and stuff, so... Uh, it only shows who uh, advanced the round of 12 and who didn't. So, who all advanced to the round of 12? Um... Kyle Busch, Martin Truex Jr., who is now ranked number two because uh, he earned uh, some playoff points during, you know, his two wins at Las Vegas and Richmond. Uh, Denny Hamlin, Logano, Harvick, Elliott, by virtue of his win, and Brad Keselowski were all locked in um, before the end of the race. Uh, those who managed to get in when the checkered flag flew and there were uh, no issues in tech, by the way, Kyle Larson, Alex Bowman, Ryan Blaney, William Byron, and Clint Boyer all made it into the round of 12, which means that Eric Almarola, Ryan Newman by a single point, well actually I don't know if it was a single point, but uh, either way, Ryan Newman, Kurt Busch, and Eric Jones are all eliminated from the playoffs. As for my final rating for this race, way too many caution flags. Um, some of the shenanigans were just stupid. The officiating was some of the worst I've ever seen. I mean, overall, this race was, I don't, in my opinion, not as good as last year's. I mean, it was still entertaining for the most part. I mean, seeing Chase Elliott get up there, um, come back from 37th to win the race in the final stage. That's pretty impressive, all things considered. Um... But I will give this race a solid 6 out of 10. Because, I mean, when the racing, when we got to see racing, was still pretty good. Just way too many caution flags and the officiating was trash. <sighs> well, that's my take on this race. <sighs> a lot of bullshit happened today for a number of different reasons. <sighs> Whatever. It'll pass. And uh, we'll go to Dover next week and uh, hopefully cooler heads will prevail. Because I know I sounded off at the beginning of this video, but I had to get it off my chest. You know, and that's what basically what this, this platform does. Is it allows me to get shit like that off my chest, so. It is what it is at this point. It's done, it's over with. I'm moving on. Let's go to next week and uh, see what happens with the next round. Till next time, this is the Packer Man signing out. Bye.